So it's just, it never gets easier. I think going into it, expecting that and knowing that that's inevitable is really important for people. Welcome back everybody to Be The Trader. Today is gonna be a fun day because I'm in Arizona at this dope crib right now and I'm talking to Dom Master Mateo. And if you don't know who Dom is, it's because he kind of stays low, right? He kind of stays under the radar, but he's a great dude and he helps a lot of people. And so just talking to him behind the camera, you're just going to love it. So Dom, welcome to the show, brother. Thanks for having me, man. Absolutely, man. Long time coming. I know, it is a long time coming. I reached out a while back yeah. and you're like, oh, not I right remember now. I was going through a rough period of trading. I think it was 2019, maybe it was. Uh, and that was, that was a point where I just really didn't feel like I had any good information to say because yeah. I was in a big drawdown period. That's when OTC has kind of cooled off. Uh, I'm sure we'll get into it, but that's kind of where I found my footing. And once those started to kind of like dwindle, I had to like reinvent myself as a trader and like build a whole new system from the ground up, basically become a newbie again. And that's when I really went in the weeds and just kind of was like, I'm working on myself. I'm, you know, blocking everything else out. You know, you're going to hit me with that first. And now I'm just like, I want to, I know we got to dive into that. We definitely got to dive into that. So I'm going to, I got to touch on it just briefly. Yeah. Because the whole idea of like having to recreate yourself is pretty amazing. So mm -hmm. like when you went through that, what was something that was like, that stands out from that memory of like completely starting over? How'd you start over? Well, it was really demoralizing. I always tell people it was harder to come back from that after having been profitable and successful to then like losing money and struggling and breaking even not having a system that's providing an income right now. Uh, that was harder than the first time, like the 10 months to get profitable the first time because like, there was this added pressure of like, and that's the other thing, like, you know, you start to get in the limelight and people know who you are and they want, they want to go to you for information. And then you start to feel like this failure that's mm -hmm. not making money. That's not a good trader. And so that it was really difficult because it was a bunch of external things like that were playing into my subconscious, I think. And like, adding pressure on where it didn't need to be. And so that's what for me going into the weeds and like rebuilding myself was a lot of just like focus on the process. Let's build a process that works. And then if we want later down the line, we'll get back into the limelight and then we'll talk about it some more and yep. when we have value to add. But right now we're going through some. And I think as a trader, like you either are committed or not. Like a lot of people, they start off and they realize I'm not committing enough time. I'm not dedicated enough. I'm not putting the hours in. Uh, and once you do that, you kind of realize like you're in it for the long run. Like I'm going to figure this out. Like even if everything goes bad, like I'm going to find a solution. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what you find. Like is a common trait amongst all the successful traders that you've talked to is like the, just that willing, willingness to succeed. And like, no matter what gets in my way, I'm going to figure it out. Um, and you just kind of have to have that. And I think going through experiences like that, like they're inevitable. Everyone wants to believe you get profitable and then, uh, you know, everything's sunshine and rainbows forever. Like it's a constant battle of ups and downs and it never gets easier. If anything, it gets harder because of all the ex external pressures that you put on yourself, you know, money, monetary things. Like once I'm at hundred K, you know, I'm consistent with that. I want to make more. And then, you know, maybe you're not doing that well this year and you have to fight with the, with the idea that maybe I'll make less. And so it's just, it never gets easier. I think going into it, expecting that and knowing that that's inevitable mm -hmm. is really important for people. I like that you said that, man, because the whole idea, you hit so many, two good things on there. And then I want to get to your story because I know people were like, well, who's Dom? And yeah. I know who Dom is, but you're about to find out the details. Just the idea that you had to, that it's constant. Yeah. Like the, the trader's journey is never over. Mm -mm. It's constant. Like maybe you're going through a dry spill. Maybe you're going through a rough patch. Maybe you're killing it right mm -hmm. now, but it's constant. And yeah. so you got to learn to love it. Yep. Right. And because if not, it's, you're never going to be happy. It yep. sounds like you're just going to be miserable. Mm -hmm. But when the whole subconscious thing that you brought up, right, you were mm -hmm. talking about how you're putting added pressure because yeah. of your last experience, you were doing well, and then now you're not. Maybe other people might be asking for help, right? Yep. I know I reached out to you, yeah. right? <laughs> So because of that, that could interfere. Is there anything you did to help alleviate that subconscious like pressure? Hey, we wouldn't be able to do these face-to-face -face interviews if it wasn't for our sponsor, Cobra Trading. So if you can just give them a few seconds of your time, we'd really appreciate it. Cobra Trading is the go-to broker for day traders and short sellers. And I'm not the only one saying this. In fact, Benzinga awarded Cobra Trading as the go-to broker for short selling. They have a heavy focus on direct market access order routing, so you have the fastest execution. They have some of the best locate prices and availability. They also have amazing customer service. I've experienced many different brokers, 
and it's why I use them every single day and why I'm proud to have them as our sponsor. Sign up now by clicking the Be The Trader referral link below and earn one free month of software with Cobra and 25% off all commissions. Now let's get back to the show. At the end of the day, you really just have to understand that that's all relevant. All that other stuff, it can't be a part of your system or your process because it only makes things worse. And that's what I kind of realized after having gone through that stretch and you know, I've gone through plenty of other rough patches. But a big thing for me is like, it's like my motto in my brain. It's just like never too high, never too low. When a stock's like ripping and I'm in long and I'm feeling good and I want to be like cheering on the stock and it's like never too high, never too low. You have to find that baseline or else you are, you're subjected to like riding that roller coaster and the downs can get really bad. Uh, that's why a lot of what I teach is risk management like first because once you get that together, once you have the idea that you're never going to blow up and you're not at risk of disaster, everything gets a lot easier and the ups are a lot better and the downs, you learn how to manage them because like we were talking about, it's, it's constant. Like I know Huddy's going through a drawdown period now. I know a lot of traders during this market, at the, besides the oil and gas sector a couple weeks ago, like hasn't been that active for most small cap traders and you're going to go through that. So big thing for me, uh, during that period of my life, I got into meditating. Uh, mm. I started doing deep breathing. Like I tried to like also detach myself from me being a trader. Like when you put in a few years and you like get profitable, like it takes a lot of effort. Like they say 10,000 hours to master something, but like trading, it's like insane. And you just have to like realize I'm a person, you know, I have a family, you know, I have a girlfriend, I have friends. Like I'm I want to learn how, how to golf better. Like you have to like be like separate yourself from trader and person and realize just because I was read today or just because I made mm. 20 grand today doesn't mean that it has any impact on my relationships or my personal well-being, my mental health. And you have to be able to be like, just separate those things and find balance. And once you find balance, like we were talking subconscious, like everything in life affects your trading, whether you believe it or not. And you have, so if you can get your life right, generally speaking, you start going to the gym again. Have you ever started going to the gym again or eating better and all of a sudden your trading gets better? It's not a coincidence. It's mm. part of the process. I'm, that's, that's gold, man. <laughs> I, I'm loving that. I'm loving hearing what you're saying right now. So now I want to start, we know where you're at right now or some of us don't, right? Okay. So how did trading even enter your life? So it was kind of funny. Um, I had, from the youngest age, remember talking about being rich and I would just say it. I had no plans or intentions of what I wanted to do. I would tell people in my family, like if they disrespected me or did something wrong, i like, you're not coming on my yacht. And it was just a joke that kind of grew and grew, <laughs> but I, this, I believe really heavily in the law of attraction. It's just like, I said it for the longest time. I went to school, I went to college because yes. I uh, didn't know what to do. Picked a major based off of money and a monetary number I wanted <clears> to hit. I was a math major, I didn't love math. I just knew if I became an actuary, I'd have a good living. Um, I went to uh, a shadowed actuary my sophomore year in college and absolutely hated it. I remember leaving there just being like, this is what the next 50 or 60 years look like. And like, again, I didn't have any other plans though. So I kept moving forward, switching my major just like business in case maybe I come up with a good idea. Or like, I want to be an entrepreneur, but I don't have a good idea. I don't have a business I want to run. I don't have a product I want to sell. Um, and as it, we got closer and closer to the end, it was, the pressure was mounting and mounting. And I was like, what am I going to do? Um, and this was a period where I had like said F school, like I was done with it. Like I was skipping classes. Like hey, I'd be lucky to go to one class a week. I was just kind of chilling, living life, like riding out the, that period of my life yeah. for as long as I could. And this was the second to last semester of college for me. Um, four I'd years, skip, four years? Yeah, I went to four okay. years, for four <clears throat> years. So I was like 20, 20 or 21. Um, and I'd skip the class and to like do the assignment that was required, I had to like rewatch the recording on YouTube and I watched it, did the paper, whatever. And then the next recommended video was like a Tim Sykes video on like how to make millions of dollars trading penny stocks. And so that day of me like skipping class and like going on YouTube led to like this journey of me like looking like, wait, you can trade from home and you can like first penny stocks. I was like, what the heck is that? I didn't know that existed. Like besides uh, Wolf of Wall Street or something. And then I just was like, that's the thing. Like I didn't know if I was going to love it. Like I do love it. Mm. Um, and I think you do have to love it. But I didn't know that was going to be, I just kind of committed and said, this is our, we're going to put all of our attention here and we're screw school, screw the nine to five. We're just going to figure it out. And you know, I, we can talk about, but I didn't put the time in for the first two to four months. I thought it was going to be easier. I'd follow some alerts. I would, uh, you know, just hop on a, hop on a pattern that someone was going to give me, make money. Um, 
And then I started to kick my butt in gear. I got, actually had some health troubles and I had to go home. The, my last semester of college I did from home. Mm -hmm. And that kind of gave me the ability to like commit to trading because I didn't have the distractions of college and friends and going out. So I just sat at home, went to doctors and then just studied. And I would study 15, 17 hours a day, all day, every day for 10 months. And I was just committed to figuring it out. Like, you know, and that, that's the, we talked about different pressures we put on ourselves, but like that period was like, you know, all friends and stuff, like friends, parents, like, what are you doing with your life? Like, you're going to learn how to trade penny stocks instead of getting a job with your degree that you spent hundreds of thousands on. Like, and, and there was a lot of doubt and stuff. But I just, I feel like I never doubted myself. And I feel like when you commit to trading, you do need to like commit to a long, hard journey that's never going to end. And you have to be up to the task. Mm. But yeah, that's how I got into trading. And then it's been a lot of ups and downs along the way. And so it took you, what was that, a year or a 10 year, months. 10 months or just 10, 10 months? months? Just 10 months to find what works for yep. you. And yeah. And then what happens next? Because you said you went through a drawdown where you're trying to figure things out. So that out. was and 2017 was when I got profitable. Yeah. Uh, 2018 was my first good year, like where I made money, like could support myself. Um, and I was just had found a niche in OTCs, buying breakouts, a lot of the framework, um, buying breakouts, buying panic dip eyes, those were a thing back then. Um, and really just sticking, like what I do now is way different than what I did back then, but that was like really just nail and bail. And yep. you know, hear people talk about that, like trying to find stocks into the clothes that were strong on big breakout days and swing them the next day and sell immediately into the gap okay. and just grow my account. And you had, you know, marijuana ran, Bitcoin ran, like OTC was hot. And, and it was nothing compared to like 2013 or 14, like a lot of these other guys talk about uh, in OTCs. But for me, it was really good. And uh, that lasted till, midway through 2019 and you know i was rolling i was happy i was making good money like trading was getting easier and easier otcs i was getting better and better at them holding for longer parts yeah. to move adding patterns in shorting first red days um and then they died and then all it was OTCs and it, it was a kind of like all connected like in one month where uh everything got hot like it was i made a ton of money i started to capitalize i remember it was fannie mae it was in february or march of 2019 and i had like my biggest month ever biggest week ever biggest trade ever and then it was just like the lights went off and there wasn't plays and it took me a while to like believe it like i kept over trading bad setups um i didn't want to learn listed because they seemed harder and i didn't yeah. want i wanted to milk what i had as long as i could um and you know i always knew maybe the day would come where i'd have to learn listed stocks um and that's when the drawdown period started when i went from like the highest of highs this is why i talk about never too high never too low to like the depths of darkness of like i cannot win on a trade like and there's nothing to trade so then i had to, it took me months and months to like slow the bleeding because i started taking bigger losses getting more aggressive to make back losses to yeah. get back green um and i just had to reinvent everything like i had to start over and say basically like i'm a brand new trader i have some stuff i've learned in terms of pattern recognition, daily charts, technical analysis, but I need to learn a different game. If I'm going to continue, like they say, adapt or perish. And that really is the truth in trading. And if you don't adapt, you know, the market's a mean, mean, uh, entity and it will take everything. You know, you mentioned when you first were in college that you were, you know, this isn't for me. I'm going to start trading. And you just really believe and you said, and you said part of that is like, you feel like trading, you really need to believe that you can do this mm -hmm. because the first couple of months you're kind of dabbling. Yeah. Right. And you weren't like in it. You don't like, know if you love it. Do you're it. not, you don't really know what you're learning. You don't know what you don't know. Right. So like, what did you do different when you come at trading from like just doing it? Like, you know, this is probably someone watching yeah. this and they just like, oh, I just found out about trading. <laughs> And I want to go, awesome. yeah, I, I want to go and check out this alert room, check out yeah. this and let me just buy this. You know, we've all done it, right? Yeah. But now they're like, well, what is he talking about when he's like switched into gear? Cause I do want to do this. Yeah. Like, was there anything you can remember that you did different from when you were acting this way versus that way? On it your first really just kind of came down to committing to doing it. Like I, the way you're talking about the way I treated the first few months of yeah. trading is how I treated everything in life. I was a good athlete. I played soccer and baseball and I always did well. Uh, I didn't start in college. And I think a lot of that is because I didn't put in the effort. I didn't put the work. I was just naturally gifted in athletics and I got as far as I could. And i never really put my head down and like worked for something. School came really easy to me. Yeah. I, I, I can memorize really easily. So I didn't learn anything in school, but I got really good grades because I could memorize the entire study sheet and go take the test. And one mm -hmm. afternoon I could do it. Um, and I guess I kind of stopped, I started feeling not like a failure, but like 
I hadn't done anything yeah. and I needed to like prove to myself that I could do something because I always had a good work ethic. Like I worked since I was 16. I worked at a pizza place and then I did landscaping and worked my way up to foreman where I was in charge of like 40 and 50 year old men cool. uh, in the summers. And you know, that's sometimes 60, 70 hour weeks. Like it's grueling. And it taught me a lot. It was like, A, it taught me I didn't want to do this the rest of my life. I don't want to trade time for money. Um, but it was also like, I can work hard and I can like, but I want to do it where it benefits me, mm -hmm. not benefiting someone else. Um, but it really came down to, um, just kind of committing to it. Like, I want to see what I'm made of. The only way for me to get here is by putting in this many hours a day, by studying this much. And I also realized like, if, they, if what's true, they say you know, 90 to 95% of traders lose, there are habits that everyone's doing that contribute right. to losing money over the long run. And you know, I heard a quote, I think it was LX21, it was like, if you do what the 95% are doing, you have a 100% chance of failure. If you do what the 5% are doing right, you have a 100% chance. 100% chance of success. Yeah. And I, I was like, okay, well, what are these people doing? What is Tim Grittani doing differently? You know, uh, what is Roland doing differently? What is Ducks doing differently? And I started to just like commit to it. And that's why I always say like, people like, I'm not a math person, I couldn't do this, or I want to give every reason, like I can't manage money. And maybe some of it's true in terms of trading, but I really feel like anyone can do it because all it takes is F time and effort. And and that's with anything in life though. I want to be a better golfer. I can't just go out there and hack it around twice a week and expect, expect to be hitting better shots. I have to practice. I have to go to the range. I have to get lessons. Get a coach, I yeah. have to get um, the proper equipment. Like, but so much of our lives, we think we deserve better, but we haven't put in the work. And I think that all just kind of culminated to me being like, you know, if I want to get where, I'm go where I want to go, I have to put my head down. And it was more of just like, failure is not an option. Like foot on the gas, let's do it. Like type of mindset. And, and then the, the fact that you make it, right? And then you find the success and you're doing really well and then you hit that dry spill and you have to keep pushing. And then you evolved and finally got into listed stocks. Mm -hmm. Was the listed stock game, what did you bring from OTCs to listed that helped you kind of get that? Well, what took me way too long to realize was that everything kind of is similar. Like it's just painted a different color or something. Like there is similarities between OTCs and listed and it was my job to figure out what those were. For me, it was like, let's take, instead of trying to learn a bunch of random patterns from other people trading, like this time I was reaching out to anyone and everyone who mm -hmm. traded listed. I was talking to Roland, Harry Haas, like teach me morning pre-market panics, teach me first red day shorts. And I was like, you can't do that. That's not how you learn. You have to pick something and you have to like get really good at it. You have to see it a thousand times so that way you know what to expect. And yes. so I was like, what parts, what am I good at as a trader? And let's take one thing, bring it over to, to listed and find a spot where that belongs and be okay with the fact that we're not going to make money. Money, making money is not important right now. It's about building a system that makes money so I can have money five years down the line, 10 years down the line. And so I just pulled like the OTC breakout and I said, listed stocks do break out. They just do diff things, diff, they do it differently. Yes. And I said, so it took me month after month of being like attract a little bit of like, how, how do they run? How, they, obviously I can't use green red as a trigger because so many start red and then go green. So um, it's not a gap up strategy for me. It's more of like, I have to make sure I don't get stopped out and survive the choppiness because yes. there's other factors at play. There's more shorts, there's algorithms, there's hedge funds. Like there's more than just the retail, which is a lot of, and the promoters, which is a yeah, lot of there's OTC. A lot of news there's in the a, world. There's a lot of, Pizza, like to make a great OTC trade, it only needs like two or three things of criteria. <laughs> For a list, a lot has to come get to come together. And I just realized where, where do I succeed? Well, technical analysis. Like I really understand daily charts. I understand daily chart levels, what's important, what's not. And then, you know, from 2019 to now, like I've really evolved into turning like what I would do with, with an OTC completely to a listed stock of like, I trade the entire framework, which is, you know, the breakout, the first red day, the first green day, and then maybe a potential bounce short. Um, but because I've seen it so many, it took me years and years to see it over and over again to go, okay, they do do their own thing mm -hmm. and it is predictable. There is an edge here. Um, it's just going to take time to figure it's, it out. Yep. And that's why I tell a lot of people who either start an OTC and they switch over or they're just trying to learn a new pattern. It's like really find out what you do well and why do you do it well and bring a little aspect of that to the new thing. Like don't reinvent the wheel. Don't try to bring in a brand new pattern. Like what you, what you do that works, works for a reason. It fits your brain or something that's going on with you, your psychology, the, what you, know, you expect from stocks. So take that with you and expand upon it. Like the way I trade a first green day is very different than how I trade a, uh, a breakout. And it's because like, I've created a system that is very, you know, I won't, don't, it, there's a lot of feel, but I want to be robotic. Mm -hmm. and I want to be able to tell you how to do it and you trade that way as well. And it be something that over time can find consistency that it shouldn't, I mean, it's gonna be up and down, but it's a left to right, up, up upward down, angle. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so the, the transition took longer than I wanted, but I think that was also 
I had to accept that as well, that it wasn't going to be an overnight fix. This wasn't just a regular drawdown. That drawdown was like, again, reinventing myself as a trader and finding out who I'm going to be for the next five years or wherever this market goes, you know? Absolutely. And I like that you said that the whole idea of find what you're good at and bring it over here and then kind of focus on that area instead of trying to do everything at once. Well, so many beginners do that. That's how I got profitable the first time. After 10 months, I just sat down, I really looked inward and I was like, okay, let's go through all the numbers. Mm -hmm. And I was like, whoa, OTC breakouts. I'm like, let's call, I was trading with a really small account. Let's say I made 1500 in the month on OTC breakouts. And that, but I gave away 1500 on all my listed stocks. And I was like, I'd watched some video about someone and they were like basically how they cut their trading activity by, in half, but doubled their profits. Phil Godecker said that. Um, and I'm like, how, how can that be? And I was like, well, you're telling me if I just cut out, well, I was talking to myself, talking to third person sometimes. Um, yeah. If I just cut out all of this, I would be profitable. And I was like, that's not that hard. I cannot do something, right? I'm a disciplined enough human being to just not do this thing. And so it was a really aggressive switch. I just said no listed stocks at all. I said only OTCs. And then eventually at the point where I was like, only OTC breakouts. And all of a sudden I started to make more and more money because I wasn't giving it back. Mm. And so that's why I always say that there's a profitable trader in every newbie. They just either will never realize it or don't have the resources available to find it out because they're not, they're not treating it like a business. They're not going through the numbers, going through their expenses, where they like. The easiest way to make money is to stop doing things that lose you money. Mm. And you have to, you're the only one who can figure that out. Like, I guess I could go, I could spend a lot of time going through all your stuff, follow you around for a month and maybe figure it out. But like, you have to be in charge of who like, you are as a trader and you have to come up with the inconsistencies and correct them and then have the discipline to apply them. Hmm. Whenever you were coming back and you said that, you know, you went through a drawdown and then you start to rebuild yourself and you start to find something that works for you and, and, and enlisted stocks. Did you run into any challenges? of trying to get there quicker like and if you did how did you, and if you didn't that's fine too but how did you kind of escalate back you know, you know it what was, I'm saying? it was and a like, lot like you think about that yeah because where i was at with otcs was kind of full blow like i was just foot out on the gas and like it was like how much money can i make right and then again i had to go through that period where i had to like accept the fact that it's not going to take it's not on my timeline it's on the process of the way the market what the market gives me but i was like how fast i can learn this new stuff right. and i can't really speed track that and make it faster i have i have to learn these things i started to yeah. realize through every drawdown period like it's a lesson i needed to learn so why am i trying you said something about enjoying the process like understanding that it is necessary for my growth down the line like stop being so addicted to money right now like immediate gratification and understand that I can be further along in a year if I go through three months of drawdown mm. because I'm going to learn lessons that are going to save me money or make me more money in a hot market. But so it kind of, so it was 2020 was when I started to get my foot, footing again. And you know, that was the crazy COVID market, which was yes. opportunity everywhere. And that's kind of where I got my footing back. And a lot of the patterns I was working on started showing up and I really underperformed for what, like if I had that market right now. Yeah. Um, but it was just being okay with that, that, you know, Jack Kellogg's going to make 600,000 this month and I'm only going to make 20. Yep. But you know what? I'm moving the reduction. I'm learning. I'm like, I'm seeing a ton of these. I'm seeing a hot sector in the new patterns that I'm working on. And it was just like being okay with that. It was taking time and understanding that it's not this hot market that I'm going to succeed in. It's the next one. And then it was. And then there was another one, I think, at the end of 2020 and 2021, I think there were some OTCs, but I, I don't remember what tickers they were or sector, but I, I, I got hot. Yeah. You know, I made like 300,000 in a month, a couple months in a row. And I was like, we're back. Like, yep. and, but I look back on the process and you look at like the P and L's from a year from, or like two years from where I started struggling to when I hit, started to actually get it. And it's like so much growth had to happen and it had to happen at that pace for me to blow up at that particular time. And then now, you know, then again, in November, December, January, February, this last year, into the last year, into this year, you know, I struggled again. But what I did different, I learned from those mistakes. I learned from that drawdown period. I learned that, you know, being in no positions, being all cash is a good place to be. It's safe. And I'm, if you're not losing money, I have the potential to make money. And I, I, only for me, it wasn't that big. I drew down 30K over those four months, which allowed me to stay level-headed, not to feel like I'm digging myself out of a yeah. hole. And not, to, I wasn't emotional. It was just like, I'm gonna, I have a process that works over time. We're just at that period where it's, the, the odds are worse. And, you know, people don't realize like, if you struggle for like two months in a row, the odds of you succeeding the next month are like, they increase. Like, you know, it's like, 
it's a weird thing to like because that's get when through that that's time. when people like really size down and like they pull back and they get less aggressive and which isn't a bad thing necessarily but and then they go through the emotional turmoil of the second they size down and pull back the market heats up and they're not ready for it because they change the process so much that they can't catch up and then by the time the hot market's over like the oil and gas sector ran for like two or three weeks um and i know a lot of people drew down the same period i did if you weren't ready for it and prepared to execute and foot on the gas you probably didn't get all your money back that you lost over those few months and so I learned a lot and the last one was, and it only took me a few months to get out of it and now I'm trading like really well right now, was that I had to learn that keeping your losses small during the drawdown periods is the most important. It's not about making, it's not always about making money. This isn't a nine to five job. Most of my years, the money comes from a couple months sporadic throughout. It's not just, you know, 5K each day for the whole year. It's never going to be like that unless, you know, you're really high quality. Like I know some traders who are like, that type of consistency, but they've been around 20 or 30 years. Yeah. I don't have that experience. I'm still going through stuff. And I think that a lot of people look at any successful trader like a year, two years in or something as like they've made it. And what you realize is if like in the groups and circles I talk to, I have a lot of really successful trading friends, they're constantly going through stuff and they're constantly struggling. They constantly ask themselves if they're actually good at this, yes, if they just got I lucky am. and it never goes away. And so like we talked about earlier, just accepting that. But having those friends and having people around. Oh yeah. It just like, cause like, I'm, like was, for example, I may be going through it and then you're not. And then someone yeah. else might be going through it and you're not now. And so it's not all the same. Each other. People think the market's hot, everyone makes money. Yeah, there's a lot of people like who that. struggle during hot markets because there's too much. Yep. There's too much to look at. Too, uh, there's too many patterns. They have too much going on. They're worried about competition with the guy on Twitter. Yep. And you know, that's what's, it's like, I could be having my best week ever and you could be having your worst week ever because of one decision that got out of control or one habit that you can't get away from. And it's not all black and white. Like it's an evolution of everything moving all the time. That's nuts, man. I love that you brought that up because it is very, it's not easy, right? In your head game. Yeah. Like you're constantly, what you're explaining through this whole conversation is that you're constantly thinking about, you're talking to yourself, you know, you're talking to yourself in third person, you're trying to yeah. evaluate, yeah. you're by yourself. So this is, you're constantly by yourself trying to figure <laughs> it's out only how you. to solve things, right? Yeah. So understanding that it's lonely, but on top of that, that you need to be your own coach. Yeah. Like you gotta be the guy who's making it happen. You gotta be the CEO. And it took me too many months to realize that. Like when I went through the first few months, I wasn't taking it serious. And you can't come into this thinking, like this is a business. You are the only employee, you are the CEO as well. And you are the only one, this is why I love it. You're the only one responsible for your success or failure. Mm. You have no one to turn on and say, it's your fault, it's his fault, it's the market's fault. A lot of people do that, but it's not true. Um, and I lost my train of thought there. But, but you have to be your own boss and you have to be okay with that and accept that and make the best decisions for you constantly, even when it might be difficult, even when it means maybe taking a break or downsizing or, you know, learning a new pattern, having to commit yeah. more hours to the day to trading, even though, you know, you made 200K last year, you thought it was all, you were going to be good forever. And now you have to learn something new. You have to go back to being a newbie and learn again. And just having that, um, the ability to kind of morph into whatever the market needs at that time. Uh, like we said, it's just always changing. You have to be on top of it. And you also brought up the whole idea of Twitter. Like you kind of threw it out there and like competing with the guy on Twitter. Can you explain what you mean by that? I think to, uh, it's just such trading these, especially after Robinhood and everything in the COVID market, everyone trades. Everyone has a Robinhood account. Everyone has a mobile device or something that they trade from. Like it used to be cool. Four years ago when I told people I was a trader. Yeah. Now they it's go, oh, me like, too. <laughs> and I'm yeah. like, really? Oh, and then so it's not even cool. Like, yeah. because they don't realize you actually do it for a living. They're just doing it from the phone. Like it's a sports gambling thing. Yeah. Um, but with Twitter, I feel like people can really put them, set themselves back. And this is what I also feel about chat rooms too. If you're too worried about someone else's success or someone else's yes. failure or worried about someone else's doing, a big thing about Twitter, I don't do it when I'm in big trades because I don't wanna see what Nate Mishad has to say because he's gonna scare me out and ruin my plan. Yep. And you know, like, and I know that about me. And I know that it's true for a lot of people who overuse that site in chat rooms when it's giving them conflicting information. And it's really hard to stick to your own plan if everyone, like even if me and Huddy disagree, like you know, he says it all the time on first read is he like doesn't talk to me because I'm so negative and pessimistic. I'm like, it's gonna break, it's gonna break out, it's gonna break the highs. And even if I don't cover or anything, um, it makes him question what he's doing. Yeah. And having like, at the end of the day, it's only you. So you have to be confident and in control of what you're doing, what your plan is. Yep. Uh, and all that outside noise, it, it's, you know, it can screw everything up. And then, you know, that just leads down other roads of where it can lead to disaster. And that's why I try to block it out as much as possible because, 
I want, at the end of the day, like, it to be my fault. If something's right or wrong, like, it to be my success or my failure. I don't want to bring something else random into the equation that has nothing yeah. to do with my plan. You know what? A lot of people don't know this about you, but hopefully they'll learn one day. <laughs> and that is that you've helped quite a bit of your buddies around you, right? We call them the Michigan boys, right? <laughs> like, you've helped them, and they've all learned trading in some way from you, right? Mm -hmm. And because of that, they found their own type of success. Yep. What's interesting is, I'm sure they're all different and I'm sure they act different. They don't have the same exact personality, right? Mm -hmm. Or they have different backgrounds. Yeah. So what, what have you learned from like just being there with people and helping someone that stands out that is common amongst them that helps them get where they are? Cause they might all have different bad habits yeah. too, right? Yep. Well, that's person by person. What I kind of realized is that anyone can do this. It doesn't matter what, line of work you came from if you were a high school dropout or you're a uh, valedictorian you know it's it really comes down to the individual person i've learned which type of people succeed with different types of tr uh, teaching like yeah. some people are more visual some people they can listen to everything some people just have to watch you and not say a word and they can learn how to trade um, some people need to study dvds and video lessons all day for a year before they get anywhere um, but i just kind of realized that it really just comes down to work ethic and Anyone can change their life, like it sounds stupid, like by just putting the work and the, and the time in. And it kind of affects me in other way, different with parts of my life now, because I realize how much time and effort goes into being good at trading. And I realize that's going to be the same way for anything in life. And, you know, I want to be a better hunter or fisherman or golfer. Oh, yeah. And I realize I'm nowhere close to putting in the hours I need to. So why would I kill a deer this year? Why would I break 80? And so it's kind of demoralizing because once you've achieved it, it's harder to like maintain that in all areas of your life because you know what it takes. Mm. Um, but basically with the Michigan boys and all the people I've helped, uh, it really just has to do with like anyone can do it. Like it, I just truly believe it's just work ethic and putting in the hours and that this is something that can be learned and it doesn't matter what your background is or what you're good at or what you're bad at. Like that's obviously going to play down the line in terms of psychology, yep. but like just to get this stuff, it's the game. Isn't that hard. That's what's a lot of people comp complicate the game. It's just patterns. Patterns are relatively easy to figure out. Like I can tell you can tell me if something's a really bad chart, a really good chart. It really comes down to execution and you know, sticking to your own plan and knowing if it is a good plan over the long run. So before we wrap this up, I just want to ask you one other thing, man, because I, I know there's going to be a lot of questions too that people are going to have. What is one thing you can tell yourself that can really help someone? Maybe, maybe they're struggling with the whole idea of like, I made some, I lost some. Mm -hmm. I made some, I lost some. My pattern's not working. What would be like one thing you could tell them if, that you haven't said already that you've done to really help you through that time? Because um, maybe they- Something yeah. I haven't said. I don't know, maybe just find out who you are like really dig deep into the psyche of who you are. I think a lot of people get into trading and they don't know who they are. Uh, they maybe once they figure it out through trading, it kind of like shows in other areas of their life. Like I am really lazy. I don't have good self-discipline. That's why I can't stick to a diet or can't stick to a workout plan. Mm. Trading kind of makes you come face to face with who you are as a person. And it's hard to admit sometimes. And that's, you know, like with when I gave up listed stocks for a while, uh, it sounds easy in theory, but it's hard to just ignore everything that everyone's talking about all day. And I realized, you know, I, my self-discipline really needed work. And maybe, you know, it's just getting up early, being more prepared for the market. I'm like, you know, again, my habits are bad. I'm not eating good. I'm not exercising. I'm not being prepared. I've gotten, to, you know, maybe I succeeded for a while because the market was hot. And the second it slowed down, I got lazy. Mm -hmm. I wasn't putting in the work. I wasn't putting that. I wasn't tracking. I wasn't updating my trade review stats and realizing if I'm doing well or doing not like, I think it really just is like find out who you are yep. and like ride that way, like, like become your, like a master of who you are so you can expect like how you're going to respond to every situation. Yes. And once you do that and you have that transparency with yourself, that you can really take that next step and, you know, because everything else we've talked about today, but implementing it with that and just like looking yourself in the mirror with honest eyes. Cause like we said, it's just you, I, you can't do it for me. Nope. You can't push the buttons for me. You can't tell me the secret magic bullet. Like, I have to do it. And until I solve all my own issues, I'm not going to succeed the way I want to. So look, man, where can people find out more about you, man? Uh, so I'm not really active on social media. I do have a Twitter. That's the one I use. If you find me on Instagram, it's probably a scam. Uh, that's private. Um, but I, I work with Huddy, Michael Hudson. We have HuddyandDom.com. If you want to check us out there, it is HuddyandDom.com. 
And I'm pretty active in the chat there and I go over trades. We have twice weekly webinars where it's kind of break down everything we're going through, psychology and then technical analysis. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Awesome, Dom. Hey man, <laughs> it was a pleasure talking pleasure. to you. Pleasure. Thanks for Thanks. having me.